Next, I want to add some noise and static to the overall image. So again, the first step is to pre-compose all these layers. So I'll select all by pressing Command or Control A, and then pre-composing by pressing Command Shift C or Control Shift C. And I'll name this one VHS Color Drift. Hit OK. And now let's start building some noise. I'll start by making a new solid by pressing Command or Control Y. And I want this to be 50% gray. So again, just make sure your hue and saturation are set to zero and type in 50 on the brightness and click OK. Make sure it's the comp size and click OK again. Then we're going to add the noise effect. Double click. I'm going to turn the amount of noise all the way up to 100 and uncheck use color noise. Then I want to just make this a little less uniform and less perfect by just scaling this out a little bit on the width. And I'll zoom in so you can see what that looks like nice and clearly. I want to add a Gaussian blur now to soften up this grain. And I'm going to set it to just horizontal again. And then turn the blurriness up just a little bit. I just want to soften that out a little bit in a unique way to give me something that looks a little bit better than just the standard default noise. Next, I need to set this to overlay. So I'll come to my blending modes and set overlay. So now that is being blended on top of my footage. Then I want to turn the opacity pretty far down. I don't want this to be extremely noticeable. But again, this is a value that you can play with. If you want your footage to be super noisy, by all means, turn this up. I'm going to turn it down to around, let's say, 12%. And then I'll rename this layer by pressing Enter and typing Grain. That's all we need to do for that layer. And because we're using the noise effect, that noise is animated over time. So again, you may not be able to see it very clearly on this compressed video, but you will definitely notice it on your own project. Next, I want to make some static lines that just randomly appear across the screen. You see this a lot in old VHS tapes, and it definitely helps sell this effect. So I'm going to start by just grabbing my pen tool, setting my stroke color to white, making the width of the stroke 5 pixels, then clicking off the screen, holding shift, and then going straight across the screen to make a single line. Then I'll select that layer and pre-compose it, Command-Shift-C or Control-Shift-C, and I'm going to rename it Static Lines. Press OK, and then I'm going to go into that pre-comp. Next, I want to make a solid, so Command or Control-Y, and I want this to be black. I'll hit OK, OK, and I'll rename this Texture. Then I want to add an effect called Fractal Noise. And this effect just generates some random patterns, and it has a whole bunch of controls to make some very unique looking textures. And we're going to make a unique one right now. First, I'm going to change the fractal type from basic down to threads at the very bottom. So we have a different pattern being generated. Then I'm going to turn the contrast up pretty far and the brightness down just a little bit. Maybe bring the contrast up a little bit more. I'm going to turn Allow HDR Results off and just set it to Clip. Then I'll open up the Transform Properties and turn the scale pretty far down. So we have these nice tiny little details. And right now the complexity is higher than it needs to be, so to help this render a little bit faster, I'm going to cut that in half, set it to 3. Then we're going to open up the Evolution Options, so scroll down, go to the Evolution Options, find the random seed, and then we're going to apply our random expression to this value. So hold down Option or Alt and click on that stopwatch and type in random, open parentheses, 0, 10,000, close parentheses. So again, this is just saying give me a random number every frame between the values of 0 and 10,000. So if I play this back, we just have a completely randomly generated texture every single frame. Great. I'll close that layer up. Next, I want to set our line layer to be a luma mat of that texture. And a luma mat just means that it's going to base the opacity on the luminance of the layer above it. So our texture is pure black and pure white with some gray values in between. So that means that some of this image is going to be completely transparent where the black is. Some of it's going to be completely opaque where the white is. And all of those values in between are going to give us semi-transparent pixels. So if I set this to a luma mat, that's what happens to our line. And it looks a whole heck of a lot like VHS line static. But we can make it even better. Playing it back right now, it's just a static line right across the screen, not moving at all. 
So let's open up the position value of that line and add a wiggle to it. So we'll hold down Option, click on that stopwatch and type in wiggle, open parentheses, 30, because we're working at basically 30 frames per second, comma, 540, close parentheses. Now I got 540 because that's half of the height, so the maximum it could move is 540 pixels up and 540 pixels down. So it shouldn't ever really go off the screen. Now I did not separate the dimensions, so it's also going to wiggle 540 pixels left and right, but that's okay. That's exactly what I want it to do. So I'll click off of this, and immediately you see that my line is just going all over the place, which is perfect. Now if I wanted to, I could grab this line and make it a little bit shorter so that it doesn't always look like it's taking up the entire width of the screen. Play that again. And you can see what that looks like. Maybe I should bring this over to the right a little bit. It looks like it's living on the left side of the screen a lot. And there's something that looks a little bit different. I'm okay with it being the full width, but if you wanted to, you can make multiple lines, wiggle them at different amounts, completely customizable however you'd like it to look. But I'm gonna take this a couple more steps further. Next up is the opacity. So I'm gonna press T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity. And this line is actually a little more intense than I want it to be. So I'm gonna turn it down to something around 25. So it's less noticeable. But I also want that opacity value to wiggle. So I'm gonna add another expression by Option or Alt clicking and then typing wiggle 30 comma 100. Now the wiggle expression is based on whatever the value is already set to. So if I wanted to, I could increase the brightness of this and the wiggle expression will be based off of that number. So I could still brighten this if I, if I needed it to be more visible or turn it back down. And that wiggle value is going to adjust how visible that line is. See on this frame, it's actually zero because I set the wiggle amount to 100 and the range of the opacity is zero to 100 so no matter where I set this, there's always the chance that the opacity could be all the way down or all the way up. And that's what I want. I want this to be very random. So I'm happy with the way that that looks, but we can take it even one step further and I'm going to open up the stroke width for this layer. So I'll just twirl the layer down, open up the contents, open up the stroke, find the stroke width, and we're going to wiggle this value as well. So I'll hold Option or Alt and click on that and type wiggle. Again, 30 times per second, and then two. Now, the reason I'm only doing two is because a single pixel difference on the stroke width is actually quite noticeable when we're working with thin lines. So now we're wiggling not only the position and the opacity, but the stroke width as well. And just to show you what's happening, I'm gonna double tap the E to bring up all my expressions and disable the position expression by clicking on this equal sign, just so we can focus on the transparency and the stroke width. So this is what our two wiggle expressions are doing on the stroke width and the opacity. Combine that with the lumimat of the texture being randomly generated on every frame, and then we enable the position expression, and we have a pretty convincing looking random static lines being generated all over this comp. Beautiful. One last thing I wanna do is soften this up a little bit just so it looks a little less digital. Let me find a good frame right there. You can see that it's still pretty crisp. So I'm just gonna add one adjustment layer on top, Option Command Y or Control Alt Y, and then type in Gaussian Blur. Soften it up just a tiny bit, maybe two pixels. And then play that back one more time. So even these little details can make a difference, and I'm trying to just make this as analog looking as possible rather than digital. I think I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit more. That looks good. Let me preview that one more time. And looks like we're in business. All right, let's close the static lines and get back to our main comp. Now we have our grain and static lines layers. Now, because the static lines was generated on top of transparency, we don't actually have to set this to any blending mode. But if you wanted to, you could set it to something like add, and it will actually brighten up the image behind it. You can see this is what it was before, this is after. That's completely something that you can adjust to your taste. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine at normal. Let's preview what that looks like so far with everything together. Yeah, this is looking really nice. 